Ball pythons can be considered happy and healthy when they are free from disease and negative welfare states are diminished and only positive welfare states remain. Now a ball python can't be happy if it's not healthy. So let's start with health. Start with a basic health check. Begin with observing the head. Now are there any signs of excess mucus around the nares or nostrils of your bull python or any excess mucus around the mouth? Do their eyes appear intact or undamaged? Is there any damage or any abnormalities to the shape of the head? If your answer is no to all of the above, then move on to looking at the snake's mouth. Now right now we're going to need to open our snake's mouths. Now if you're not comfortable with this, I would leave this part to your veterinarian. Now you want to hold your snake gently by the back of the head, either in this position so that you're gently just holding them, the head can't be pulled back through the hand, or you do like a pincer, two sides and then one above and hold them gently. You don't need a death grip on your bull python, just enough so that you're in control. And more often than not, bull pythons will open their mouths in response to this happening in the first place. But if not, you can use a pencil or a lollipop stick to gently just press it against their lip to get them to open their mouth and slide that in and turn it sideways if it's the lollipop stick and that will hold your ball python's mouth open. What you're looking for is an overall nice pink healthy looking mouth. Check for any excess bubbling or drooling. Are there any broken teeth? Or is there any areas that look particularly sore with like really ob obvious like reddening? If all is good, we can move on from the head and mouth and move on to the neck. Now, does your snake appear to be moving the neck in a fluid motion? Is there any damage, growths, bulges, or any abnormalities to the neck that you can see or feel? Now we're gonna move on to the body. Now the same applies. Is it moving in a fluid motion or is it dragging any parts of its body? Make sure you check the underside. Are their belly scales intact or are they damaged? A big thing to look for are signs of scale rot. Now this can kind of look like a rusting of the scales. If it's all clear, then you've got nothing to worry about. Next, check your snake's cloaca. Now that's the little plate that's at the bottom of their body on the underside at the end of the body and at the start of the tail. It shouldn't be crusted or engorged. It should look nice and healthy and clean. Next, move on to the tail itself. Now that's everything on the snake's body past the cloaca. Is it moving fluidly? Are they using it? Can they grip with it? Is there any damage, any bulges, any abnormalities, any cysts? If not, then great. If working down from the head of the snake to the tail of the snake, you really think there is no issues and you've got the all clear, then congratulations, your bull python has passed its health check. By no means is that a replacement for a qualified veterinarian checking up on your snake, but most professionals can do a basic health check just to keep on top of things to make sure that their snakes remain healthy. Like I say, our bull python should be at the very least free from diseases and parasites. Now, if you've already got a bull python or you've had it for some time, you probably already know whether your snake has mites or not. But if you're just getting a bull python, this is something to take very seriously. I would take your bull python and place it in a bath with a few inches of lukewarm water and then add a few drops of either olive oil or some Dawn dish soap that's like unscented. What this does is it actually ruins the surface tension of the water for mites so that they can't float. It also makes your snake a bit slippery so that it might slip off and then drown. Now snake mites don't actually lay the eggs on snakes but rather the materials and beddings and everything else in an animal's enclosure. So if you get a brand you snake and you give it that bath and then you look in the water after and there's no black bits then maybe you got you got lucky and no snake mites came in great then what i would do is just keep it on something white like kitchen paper or like white printer paper just for a few weeks just to see if any mites that clung on then reproduced and might start appearing when you keep on white you should be able to see and if nothing appears Great, we didn't get snake mites. Now, what I really, really highly recommend is testing for diseases. The obvious big bad for bull pythons is nidovirus. And to put it in simple terms, not exact representation, but it's kind of like human AIDS, but in a s snake AIDS, really. That's glossing over a lot of science, but it's something that they have forever once they get it. So you just want to make sure that your snake doesn't have it in the first place. So what I would do is order a test kit either from Fish Head Labs in the US or Pals Labs in the UK. They will then send you a test kit with instructions and a swab for you to swab your ball python's mouth. Again, we're going to use the same method of opening our ball python's mouth. 
and then do a little bit of a swab of the ball python's mouth. You then mail it back to the lab and you await your results. If you follow the guidance, they will get you through testing. Obviously, I will recommend fecal screening and going all out on just making sure your, your ball python is healthy and is free from disease. Obviously, that correlates to your budget. But at the very least, I would try just to get a nidovirus test in there. Just try your best. It's all anyone can really ask. Now, your snake should also have the appropriate lighting and be in an rich environment. So if you don't know about that, then I would watch our ball python care guide. That will get you to a really healthy place of knowing what's what and also eliminating a lot of variables for what's later to come in this video. Now, let's talk about behavior and body language of ball pythons. Now, remember, it's all about the absence of negative states before we get to the positive states. If your bull python is balling up and hiding its head, if it's hissing, if it's striking or if it's highly reactive to being touched, if it's really stiff in its body, if it's breathing really heavily and you look at the side of your snake and it's like that really fast. If it's freezing, then it's experiencing negative emotions or it's overall in a negative welfare state. Then what you need to do is identify why is it in this negative state? And why is it displaying these behaviours? Are you picking your ball python up too much when it doesn't like it? Has it gotten to the point where it thinks every time you're going to go in or be near your ball python that you're going to grab it and pick it up when it doesn't like that? Are there not enough places to hide so it feels unsecure in its habitat? These are all things that need to be considered. Now take my ball python for example. I recently filmed a video about her enclosure upgrade and all she wanted to do was be involved. I'd move to one end to film and she would follow. Now I rarely if ever pick her up unless it's vital and in turn she wasn't expecting me to pick her up constantly. Now I'll go and service her enclosure without touching her and we've had so many interactions now where I've just not touched her and nothing's happened and nothing she perceives as negative has happened to her so each time I come in she's like oh it's just Liam. She's not like oh this guy's gonna grab me again oh god oh god and like getting defensive and ball up she's always relaxed because it's always a relaxed interaction and nothing she doesn't want to happen happens to her on a regular basis and because of all of that now she trusts me even to the point where i'm playing about with measuring things in her basking spot and she wants to come over and be involved and say hello and see what's going on now if i'm constantly grabbing that snake because i want to cuddle and play with it and show it off to my friends then she isn't going to react that way it's all about having a healthy respect but also of like consent based handling for your snake. That's not to say I never handle my snake. As you can see in the footage, I've had to restrain her to check her mouth or swab her. So there are situations where it's vital to actually handle and not only handle, but restrain. But because it's very few and far between, she tends to forgive me for the most part because I don't actually constantly do it to her. We have to check our own behavior as much as we have to check this. Now that's really important because people forget about how they're behaving towards the snake. Now if your bull python is relaxed and loosely coiled or stretched out and it's slow and casual in its movements and it will casually come towards new things and check it out rather than shying away and acting in like a scared manner. If it's actually stretching out to move in a straight line and it has very normal breathing patterns and it's not like <laughs> if it's actually just chill and just breathing normally and they'll actually periscope and look around and will actually spend some free time in the open and it isn't terrified of being caught out in an open space if you have all of that then you have a bull python that's displaying very comfortable behavior and most likely a positive welfare state now this is where we want to be we want to be in this state with the view of reducing the negative states to the point of its elimination where we only remain with a snake that's happy and healthy and in positive welfare states if you want more guides to bull pythons then this is the channel for you subscribe and i'll see you in the next video